Welcome to the Top Dog Alumni Awards, a proud Fresno State tradition. Since 1953, this prestigious award has been presented to our most accomplished alumni. Over the years, we have celebrated bright minds, ambitious spirits, and bold actions that have made a significant impact in communities across the nation, the globe, and in our valley. From astronauts and politicians, award-winning actors and poets, NFL athletes and U.S. Olympians, to entrepreneurs and innovators, Fresno State has helped support and grow incredible alumni. Tonight, we celebrate this year's remarkable alumni and friends and reflect on their notable successes. Their accomplishments not only inspire those here tonight, but also generations of our young leaders on the rise. We are proud to call these individuals top dogs and welcome you to tonight's celebration. Good evening. On behalf of the Fresno State Alumni Association Board of Directors, welcome to the 2019 Top Dog Awards. I'm pretty jazzed, I have to admit. We are here tonight. That's right, that's good, okay. We are here tonight to celebrate an exceptional group of alumni who inspire us and represent the very best of Fresno State. The mission of the Fresno State Alumni Board is to inspire, engage, and celebrate alumni to support student success. And this evening pretty much does all that one time. For more than 100 years, alumni have volunteered their time, not me personally for 100 years, they have volunteered their time to, and resources to enhance the student experience and engage alumni with their alma mater. I would like, if we just take a second, to ask the Fresno State Alumni Board and um, any past presidents that we have here to just stand up and be recognized. It's great. It's a great team and some great leaders in the past. Thank you for your exemplary service and outreach to our community. I would also like to thank all of you for joining us as we celebrate this year's Top Dog Honorees. It's hard to believe, but we began this annual celebration back in 1953, which also happens to be the year that I was born into a family with a Fresno State professor as a father and a mother who received her master's degree here. And I know many of you are second, third, and maybe even fourth generation alumni and are part of the long legacy and tradition of our university. To date, more than 345 alumni and friends of Fresno State have crossed this stage and been recognized for their contributions to our alma mater, to our community, to our state, our nation, and many to the world. And this year, the 66th year of this celebration, we are excited to add 13 more alumni to this great list of recipients. I would like to take a moment uh, and ask all the past top dog recipients who are, here, who are here to stand to be recognized. So if you were a past dog, would you please just stand up and let us recognize you? It's great. Thank you for all that you do for our community and for everything beyond that. Tonight you will hear the inspirational stories of a diverse group of individuals small business owners and philanthropists, engineers and educators, law enforcement, social workers, all are individuals committed to bringing about positive change in society. They are in fact all change makers. I should note that a top dog award is not something that can be earned. This is an award that says your peers, family, friends, and Fresno State all believe that you have gone above and beyond, and that the impact you have made on this earth has changed lives for the better. It is an award that says you represent the very best of this university and our community has to offer. My congratulations to the 66th Annual Top Dog Alumni Honorees. You make all Fresno State alumni and friends proud to be Bulldogs for life. Let's give them a round of applause. Now please join me in welcoming President of Fresno State and my friend, Dr. Joseph I. Castro.
Good evening, everybody. I want to thank you, Kurt, for your exemplary leadership of our Fresno State Alumni Association Board of Directors. We've brought together tonight a remarkable audience. And Mary and I are pleased that you're all here to welcome uh, all of our Top Dog recipients for the 2019 Top Dog Alumni Awards Gala. Tonight, we celebrate excellence. Excellence that's been demonstrated by our distinguished alumni and friends, including our Top Dog recipients, past and present, and all of you here in the room tonight who proudly champion our university. And that excellence is being demonstrated here at Fresno State every single day by our talented students, faculty, staff, and administration. In this beautifully decorated space, and several of you have said, I've never seen Save Mart Center look so beautiful, we have the current generation of leaders sitting alongside our talented students, the next generation of leaders. And as you know from your personal experiences, there are no shortcuts to excellence. And Fresno State is really a great example of this. From our humble beginning in 1911, through the hard work and persistence of so many of you and the generations who came before us, Fresno State has now been ranked among the top 25 universities in the country for four consecutive years. This year, uh, Fresno State was again the only California State University campus, and I like to remind Chancellor White of that. <laughs> and we were selected alongside of six Ivy League institutions, six University of California campuses, MIT, and top-ranked Stanford University. And as our valued alumni, I hope that you share our pride in Fresno State being recognized as a leading public university in the nation for expanding educational opportunity for our diverse students and for conducting research that benefits all of us. Thank you. Just as importantly, though, these rankings place a premium on public service, which, as you know, transforms the valley that we call home, where more than 80% of our alumni choose to live, work, and lead as they strengthen the social and economic fabric of our local communities. So we actually have much to celebrate tonight with a very positive national attention focused on our increased academic distinction. Now more than ever, it's a time to be bold. As one Bulldog family, in our continued efforts to provide a quality and affordable education for talented students who represent the rich diversity of our Central Valley and beyond. And your continued support will be vitally important as we sustain and strengthen our student success efforts. The Valley's future is filled with almost unlimited potential. Our region has one of the youngest and most diverse populations in the nation. At the same time, the Valley, which is the worldwide hub for agriculture, is not yet growing enough graduates with bachelor's degrees, especially in the fields of science and technology, engineering, agriculture, and math. A recent study indicates that while the Valley has 11% of California's population, we only have about 6% of the state's population with bachelor's degrees. So we have more work to do. And as all of our top dogs know very well, 
The road to success is neither smooth nor straight. Several overcame personal challenges and roadblocks as they navigated through their professional careers. Yet all of them exemplify what is possible with hard work, focus, a desire to learn, and support from one another. And together as one big bulldog family, our continued focus on excellence and pride in, future, in fostering future top dogs will help to elevate our valley, our state, to new heights of success. So I want to thank you again for attending tonight, and congratulations to each of our newest top dogs. Go dogs! And now I have the distinct opportunity to introduce one of our most talented young leaders at Fresno State, here in the Valley, California, and beyond, our enthusiastic president of the Associated Students. Please welcome Omar Hernandez. Good evening. My name is Omar Hernandez, and I am the president of the student body, otherwise known as the ASI. I would like to begin by saying how honored I am to be a part of this event alongside some of our most distinguished alumni and esteemed guests of the community. As you may already know, the community of Fresno and Fresno State are forever intertwined and depend on the support of each other. Without the support of the community, Fresno State cannot provide a plethora of amenities and extracurricular opportunities that have provided thousands of students a sense of pride and belonging, as well as the opportunities necessary to ensure their future success. On the flip side, without Fresno State, the Fresno community would experience a shortage in the amount of extraordinary people who make community revitalization, economic stability, and civic engagement a possibility. As a student body president, I have had the opportunity to collaborate with the presidents of the CSU system. And during my time of getting to know them, I have realized and can proudly tell my constituents that we have something special here in Fresno State. The access to amenities, the shared governance, and who can forget the Fresno State ice cream? <laughs> we are the pride of the valley because we, as an institution, reciprocate our pride for this valley. We are the pride of the valley because we empower students to be leaders in not only our community, but also the entire United States. Because we provide the experience necessary for our students to work these fertile lands in a way that keeps California on the map. Because we represent the Triple A's. Now, for those of you that don't know the Triple A's, here Triple A stands for the great academics, athletics, and affordability of Fresno State. Everyone in this room represents growth for this university over time, which is why I would like to thank you for contributing to the success of our students who will in turn be the future alumni and top dogs. Thank you for paving the way for generations of students to come. After all, today's students are tomorrow's alumni. We are bold, we are Fresno State, and we are Bulldog proud. Thank you. Thank you, Omar, and thank you, Dr. Castro, for those uh, compelling thoughts and encouraging words tonight. You know, as we share these stories tonight, one thing becomes really clear. Fresno State has a deep history of alumni who've dedicated their energy and their hearts to serving their alma mater, to serving their community, and really to serving society at large. The personal journeys of these top dogs were shaped by their education and their experiences right here at Fresno State. As this university begins its 109th year, this event reminds us that many of our leaders of tomorrow come from right here on this campus. So right now we'd like to take a moment 
direct your attention to the screens, and we're gonna get to know some of this year's recipients. I am Emer O'Farrell. Barry Moss. Ken Mimi. Elder Dominguez. I'm Jan Kahn. I'm Charles at Agana. I am Christopher Bencomo. I do see her there. I am Jim Vague. Chris Pacheco. Cho Tang B. Yang. All right. Timothy Cotman. I am Antonio Petrosino. My name is Brian Panish, and I'm a Fresno State top dog. You know, I never would have been able to achieve my goals without the support of my family and friends. They may not have known exactly what I was doing uh, because I was the first in my family to pursue a professional career, um, but they knew that it was important to me, and that was enough. And they were always very supportive and encouraging. In America, we are very successful and we have a lot of luxury in what I came from. You have, Bill have nothing. And I think that coming to America, the reason that I get a chance, when I get a chance to attend a high school and go to college, I want to go as far as I can. In Italy, uh, when I was, I was a child, of course, at the time, uh, about uh, 10 years old when the war Second World War uh, started. It was very, very difficult for so many of the people because of the ration and so on and so forth, you know. And uh, my mother, of course, she was the person that uh, would give her her shirt off the back. When I met my wife, uh, she uh, uh, she sort of took over exactly the, th the things that my mother uh, my mother was uh, was doing, you know, in in helping people coming from other country. Actually, two other continents um, and come here to the United States, not speaking English. I started working in odd jobs and, and the dairies and uh, ranches around the valley. It was still the dream, the dream for me to th this great country, to be part of this the life here in America. I was the first uh, in my family to graduate, to, to go to college. It was literally my first time here, my first day on at school. Uh, and never had been here other than to go through the admissions process. Uh, it, to say that it was overwhelming would be an understatement. It was impressive, larger than life, something that was at that point in time a little bit beyond me. My sister took me to, at three years old to a uh, radio show here in Fresno. I sang a song and I won the competition at three. <laughs> And, and so I, that, that got me interested, actually. I picked Fresno State because I found out they had a phenomenal speech department that had theater and all, television, radio, you name it. And so that's why I came to Fresno State. I wanted to be the kind of lawyer that went to court that represented people. I wanted to represent the people, not the powerful. And I wanted to represent people that had stories that had been wronged and they needed someone to stand up for them and to be their advocate. We were on the very, very low end of the economic deal. I just looked around and decided that I just did not want to do that anymore. And the way to do it was get an education, to get a bachelor's degree almost in anything. Um, I knew a couple of lawyers as I was growing up, and uh, on the right side of the law, by the way, <laughs> I could just see that they were really satisfied with what they did. and they and they made a difference. Needed to make a difference in my life, and I thought this was the way to do it. I guess when I was a kid, it was kinda, I just played cops and robbers all the time. And um, I had like, when I was a kid, I had a ton of Legos, and like half the city was police, and the other half was bad guys. And I was just, I mean, like my entire life, I played cops and robbers, and I just never stopped. I was always interested in knowledge. And it really was a given from an early age that I would go into education. I am a very proud alumnus of the first cohort of the doctoral program in uh, educational leadership here at Fresno State. For me, that program epitomizes what Fresno State stands, stands for. Excellence, commitment, and a desire to really make a difference here in the Valley.
We're, of course, going to get to know our recipients a little better throughout the evening. For now, we're going to let you enjoy your dinner. But before you do, I, I just have a question. Uh, is there anyone, I, we've got so many power couples out here dressed so nicely for a big date night at the Top Dog Alumni Gala. I'm just wondering if any of these couples are celebrating an anniversary here tonight. Why are you laughing? Oh, you know this couple down here? Our president and first lady of Fresno State, happy anniversary to Joe and Mary Castro. I don't know if you can top this crowd for your next anniversary, but you can try. All right, enjoy your dinner, and we'll be back with the rest of the program in a bit. Before we continue with the celebration, we'd like to take a minute to thank some of our very generous sponsors of tonight's evening. Their financial and, at times, in-kind support helps make this spectacular evening possible. So join me in applause first for tonight's platinum sponsors, Media Solutions Incorporated and KC24. Now let's thank our gold sponsor tonight, the law firm of Panish, Shea, and Boyle. And finally, how about a round of applause for our silver sponsors? Tonight we have California Health Sciences University, Community Medical Centers, Fresno Lexus, and the law firm of Wild, Carter, and Tipton. And we know that just like tonight's recipients, our sponsors are dedicated to consistently making a meaningful impact here in our community. Right now, we're gonna have a chance to get to know our recipients a little bit better, so take a look. It was great being a student here. I'd go back and do it again. I enjoyed all of the on-campus activities, the uh, uh, vintage days, the concerts. I enjoyed spending time uh, with my friends here and, uh, and also all of the Bulldog athletic events. I attended a lot of those and it was really fun. There were about 15 of us and uh, in, in, in the classroom, and we were all foreigners, more or less. So we all spoke different languages. And so we were conversing, you know, and, and you would hear, if you pass by, you know, you would hear the conversation of being uh, uh, three words of one language, four of the others, and the people that pass by, uh, students would pass by and say, something's wrong with these people. <laughs> but uh, it, that was, it was something else, I never, I, I never forget that. My grades were not solid. Uh, I was a very poor student and the first semester was a very much of a wake-up call. And after a couple of semesters, um, I had been uh, asked to leave the university. I'd been academically disqualified not once but twice. Um, reality set in and the, the importance of education and it was the realization that I had to buckle down to study hard and to achieve and that's what really propelled me through. But I worked three, three four jobs, uh, uh, from uh, fast foods to deliveries to fun books deliveries. I have to come to classes. Uh, I have to study for exams. Uh, so managing my time was uh, probably uh, one of the most challenging things and helped me on my professional life going forward. When I graduated, um, that was a, great accomplishment for me. Nothing could stop me for, for, to, to fulfill my dreams. Favorite memory is the space of the library that I get to study. I always try to get to Fresno State Library before it's open, so I get to go to the desk that I, I my favorite desk. Being a part of an undefeated season, there's something really special about that. For me, it was the discipline and the structure of Fresno State football that carried over into my life in selling and managing and operating because you pretty much have to have discipline and you better have some structure. Fresno State will give you really good opportunities and uh, will set you up for success. I guess if I could talk to myself back then, I would have, uh, I would have just told myself, just go for it, you'll, you'll do great. Um, I know like when I first graduated, I was a little bit hesitant, 
on stuff, but just take risks. At least for me, I felt like they uh, really equipped me to, to do a good job. I had never really considered uh, necessarily uh, medicine because, um, you know, no one in our family was a doctor. Nobody we knew was a physician. There were no role models. When I say that Fresno State changed my life uh, profoundly, I really do mean that. Um, you know, had I not um, come to Fresno State, I would have never applied to Harvard Medical School or be accepted at Harvard Medical School. And it was at Harvard that I met my wife. I felt that you had to be a student of, of uh, character. And uh, you had to uh, try to behave in a manner which would make you a success in life. And so that's what I did. I've done it all my life. My biggest memories revolve around sports. The Freedom Bowl, going to the football games, and Trent Dilfer was the quarterback, and Rivers was the running back. I mean, it was just exciting. The coaches, the staff, the administration, the university, they had a lot of pride in Fresno itself and Fresno State Bulldogs. And I learned that uh, from the people there and carry that on till today. And my love of the Bulldogs only gets greater. Boy, what a great class of top dogs we have tonight. And it's time to meet them and welcome them up here. So tonight's first recipient is someone whose generosity has yet to meet its bounds. Originally from the Azores, he moved with his family to South Africa when he was seven years old. Then he immigrated to the, uh, the United States and settled in Hanford. From an early age, he saw the importance of community. And as he attended college and later started his own business, he made sure that his life and his company reflected this value. He supported numerous local charities and Fresno State through his involvement in the Downing Planetarium, the Jordan Agricultural Research Center, and Maya Cinemas at Campus Point. He's an avid supporter of the Jordan College of Agricultural Sciences and Technology, providing students and faculty access to his company, West Tech Systems Incorporated, consulting on farm restoration and enhancement projects and solar power estimating. More recently, he helped to establish a partnership with the University of the Azores, which provides students and faculty experiential learning opportunities, including internships and cross-cultural experiences. And along with his wife, of course, he's opened his home to host students from the Azores. He's also a founding member of the President's Portuguese Leadership Council at Fresno State. And most importantly, he impacts our community and the world around him by impressing on our students the rewards of giving back. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Helder Dominguez, this year's Outstanding Alumni Award recipient for the Jordan College of Agricultural Science and Technology, escorted tonight by Dean Dennis Neff. Thank you. This is unbelievable. Where I came from to where I am today, um, I'm so honored to be here tonight. I want to thank Dr. Castro, Dean Witte, Dean Neff, and all my friends at the Jordan College for this great award. <clears throat> I also like to thank my family and my great friends that are here tonight for their support and encouragement throughout my career. Fresno State gave me the education and the tools that I needed to su su succeed in life. And I will forever be grateful to this great university. Thank you very much. Congrats again to Helder and we're just getting started. If you're familiar with Fresno State, I'm pretty sure you've heard of the Peach Blossom Festival. Some of you may be competed. It's a Fresno State tradition for more than 50 years. And our next recipient was recruited as a student to help start that rich tradition, and he's been involved in the Peach Blossom Festival ever since. He's a long-standing figure in public relations and the advertising community here, running his own PR firm for 26 years, dedicating his time and talents to fundraising and collaborative activities with the goal of improving our community. 
During the course of his career, he established the Fresno chapter of the Public Relations Society of America. He served as the president of the Fresno State Alumni Association, and he serves as a board member with the Fansler Foundation, whose goal is to improve services for children with physical, educational, or health disabilities. He also served as president of the Central Valley American Lung Association, president of the Fresno County Tuberculosis Association, two nonprofits he's passionate about in their goal to improve the quality of life for individuals with breathing disabilities. The impact that he's made in the Fresno community may best be summarized by one of his longtime friends and colleagues who said, the fact that he has made a positive difference in the lives of so many people is a heartwarming reminder to all of us that there's no expiration date on honesty, integrity, and patriotism. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Charles St. Agata, this year's Outstanding Alumni Award recipient for the College of Arts and Humanities, escorted by Interim Dean Nora Chapman. Thank you to Fresno State, the Alumni Association, School of Arts and Humanities, and my professors. To my family and wife of 51 years, Joyce. To my past public relations clients and fellow uh, professionals. To Dante Simi and the Learn for Life Charter Schools. To Bill Matesso for this nomination. And to the Sigma Chi fraternity for giving me the right path to a successful life. and providing lifelong friendships and support from my brothers. This honor is truly appreciated. If I could pick it up. <laughs> Thank you. I have another question for the crowd. Are there any Sigma Chi's in the house? Oh. I just couldn't tell a few minutes ago, sorry. All right, well this one will be fun. Tonight's third recipient is originally from East Los Angeles, but he's made his life here in the Valley, first as a student attending Fresno State, and now as a businessman, a husband, and a father, with a future Fresno State graduate sitting at his table tonight. Beyond his memories of $2 burritos at the bucket, and playing Division I football under coach Jim Sweeney on an undefeated team in 1985, as he reminded us. Beyond all that, our next recipient was also profoundly impacted by Fresno State faculty in the outstanding Craig School of Business. The lessons that he learned in both the classroom and on the football field have informed his business philosophy and his support for the local community in Fresno State. One of the accomplishments that he is most proud of, you may have figured this out, other than being a bulldog, is owning and operating locally owned businesses in radio and print advertising, and using those businesses sincerely to benefit our community. You're likely familiar with a few of his companies. KJUL, 95.7 The Fox, Mega Prints, Quick Signs, and some radio station called 940 ESPN that you're all gonna listen to tomorrow night when the Bulldogs beat Sacramento State. For more than 30 years now, he has been a champion of Fresno State Athletics as a volunteer, as a donor, as an advocate. And if you've ever seen any of those beautiful Pride of the Valley lawn signs, anybody have one of those? This is the guy who made those happen. His passion for Fresno State is best summed up by his own words, maybe you've heard him say it, bulldog born, bulldog bred. Wonder where he got that. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome and join me in welcoming and congratulating my friend and my boss, by the way, Chris Pacheco, this year's Outstanding Alumni Award recipient for the Department of Athletics, escorted by our Athletic Director, Terry Toomey.
I know, you're all taking odds. How fast will he cry? I get it. At, at 55, I, I need to put on the glasses, though. For those of you who know me, you know how much I enjoy this kind of thing. Getting up here and having you laugh at me for being a crybaby. Well, I was told to keep it to 20 to 30 seconds, so let me apologize in advance, because this could go on all night. And don't try to leave either, because I've made arrangements for all the doors to be locked. So you're all stuck with me. Uh, seriously though, congratulations to all tonight's recipients. It's an honor to be here. I'm truly humbled. Some of the people that I owe my life to are gone. I miss them. I wish they were here. So I could thank them for their leadership, their special brand of encouragement. Just one more time, I'd, you're gonna have to cue that down because I'm not done. <laughs> Just one more time, I would love for Jim Sweeney to kick me in the ass. He was the absolute greatest motivator I've ever known. The amazing Bob Duncan, who showed me how to give unconditionally. I just am one lucky dog. Lucky to have my mom, my wife, my kids, my friends, and all my great partners who are here tonight. I want to say thank you to all of you for putting up with my daily antics. My Fresno State experience. Fresno State took a chance on me, and the chance provided me with a wonderful education. For this, I am grateful. This community embraced me with tremendous support in my different business ventures, and for this, I am grateful. My support for Fresno State and the Fresno community is the driving force in my everyday life. During my playing days at Fresno State, Jimbo introduced me to our creed. Bulldog born, bulldog bred, I'm gonna be a bulldog to the day I'm dead. Thank you very much. We should sell those glasses at the Bulldog Shop, by the way. <laughs> Tonight's fourth recipient understands the value of higher education, which is why, as a business owner, he has developed programs to support his employees paying off outstanding student loans. He also supports the Craig School of Business Research Fellows Program. He's on the Business Advisory Council and the President's Southern California Council, where he led the effort to establish an endowed scholarship for Fresno State students. For the past five years, he and his wife have graciously opened up their home, hosting an annual SoCal summer send-off, connecting incoming students with current students and also alumni who live in the Los Angeles area. He has consistently hired graduates from Fresno State and helped other graduates relocating to Southern California by coordinating interviews, providing recommendations, and even sometimes with housing. Since his childhood in Porterville, he has had oil in his veins, working at a family-owned car dealership in his hometown. After graduation, he stayed in the auto business, working in both the accounting and retail space before steering his way into auto financing, where he's remained now for the last three decades. He's the president and CEO of United Auto Credit Incorporated, a nationwide top 10 non-prime auto lender. Philanthropy, and service are at the core of his company's values. And they live this out at their locations nationwide, sponsoring local and national nonprofit organizations. As they employ many young professionals, he says, we teach them accountability and about the value of service to their community and to others less fortunate. If we can make an impact and change that person's trajectory in life, there can be no greater measure of success. That's a direct quote. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Jim Vagum, this year's Outstanding Alumni Award recipient for the Craig School of Business, escorted by Dean Robert Harper. Thank you all very much. Uh, I get 20 seconds. So um, Chris, I may beat you to the crying. Um, my mother always told me, always tell the hostess she looks beautiful tonight. So Mrs. Castro, uh, happy anniversary. Joe, thank you very much for everything. 
Um, I'll keep it short. Thank you to everybody in this room. I am grateful to be a son of the San Joaquin Valley and everything that this school has taught me has carried me throughout my entire career. I remember every moment on this campus fondly and I will tell you I carry it with me every single day. Um, I love this town. I love this school and I'm so proud of the two of you and Dean Harbor. Thank you so much for everything that you've allowed. Thank you. Appreciate it guys. Our next recipient has been the superintendent of the Clovis Unified School District for the past two years. She's responsible, probably for some of your kids and grandkids, by the way, but for 50 schools and 43,500 students. As superintendent, she works to ensure that Clovis Unified's core value of being America's benchmark for excellence in education and developing every student in mind, body, and spirit is accomplished. And under her leadership, Clovis Unified is succeeding in those goals. The district is one of a select few to be named an honor roll district by the California Business for Excellence in Education. And it's the only district in the nation, in the nation, to have all five of its middle schools designated as schools to watch. Because of their academic success, Clovis Unified schools have been identified as California distinguished schools more than 100 times. She's passionate about improving the quality of education in our valley, and she has created strategic collaborations with area school districts to encourage community-based educational reform. As a lifelong learner, she sees opportunity to learn from everyone, saying, listen to the perspectives of those around you, veteran teachers, administrators, parents, the person in the cafeteria, the person in the office, and even the bus driver. There's a lot to be learned from those around you. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Emer O'Farrell, this year's Outstanding Alumni Award recipient for the Kremen School of Education and Human Development, escorted by Dean Laura Alamillo. Thank you. You know, as I look around this room, I see an entire community that loves Fresno State and appreciates the exemplary education that you provide for this community. And I'm so honored to be associated with this university. Thank you for welcoming me when I uh, participated in the first uh, cohort of the doctoral program. I just want to thank my friends, my family, uh, uh, my colleagues from Clovis Unified. I want to thank the governing board for putting their faith in me. And I just want to say what an honor it is to receive this uh, award tonight. Thank you. All right, our sixth recipient tonight, if you're keeping count, sixth in the order on that lineup card, a leading expert in the field of surveying and photogrammetry. How many of you can spell that? He is the president and chair of the board of Towel Incorporated, an advanced surveying, mapping, and geospatial solutions provider with locations throughout California and Colorado. He's a member of the American Council of Engineering Companies, serving on committees that meet with federal and state government organizations to promote improvements in engineering practices. He's a passionate supporter of the Lyles College of Engineering, giving up his time, talent, and treasure to help further the success of the college. Since the early 1990s, that was a while ago, he has served as chair of the Fresno State Geomatics Engineering Advisory Council, and he's a regular contributor to the Geomatics Engineering Conference, has been a member of the Lyles College of Engineering Advisory Board, and also a regular guest lecturer in the Geomatics Engineering Department. In his estimation, the Geomatics program at Fresno State is one of the best, and not just one of the best, but also one of the toughest, one of the most rigorous in the country. In 2009, he was named the Outstanding Community Partner for the Lyles College of Engineering Geomatics Engineering Program. Those are some pretty heady credentials, aren't there? So let's welcome and congratulate Ken Mimi, our Outstanding Alumni Award recipient for the Lyles College of Engineering, 
escorted by Dean Ram Nuna. Microphones always hit me in the head. Well, thank you all for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is a wonderful event. Thank you to the Fresno State Alumni Association for this wonderful honor. And congratulations to all of the other awardees tonight, along with those from the past. And thank you to Dean Nuna, Steve Weekland, Nicole Traverso for all your efforts to put this together. Thank you to President Castro and his wonderful wife and the university. And thank you to my wife, Maggie, my son, Elliot, and daughter, Olivia, and the rest of my family who are here tonight, along with uh, all of the faculty from the Geomatics Engineering Program, Dr. Munji, and others. Uh, thank you, too, for the, Geomat uh, the Geomatics Engineering Advisory Council members who attended tonight and all of those who serve the program to make it the best in the country. I hope you guys all have a wonderful time here tonight. This is a fantastic university. I want to echo what Chris Pacheco said. I, I feel like a lucky dog every time I think about Fresno and Fresno State. I'm also a Valley boy. I love it here. Go dogs! never have thought I am I would get to where I am today it's taken a village it's taken my people I've worked with my mentors my family family support is huge I think when you wake up every morning there's an opportunity to discover something new about this world you know Doc Buchanan used to say if you want to develop winners you have to surround our kids with winners and I tell our new teachers that hiring the best role models is one of the most important things we do in the district Working with children is, is very gratifying. In their lives, what they're doing, what they're trying to accomplish, hear what they have to say, provide them with my own experiences, people moving in a positive direction. It doesn't mean that we all have to be the same or move in the same direction at all times, but all move in a direction that creates positive results and positive change. I always wanted to be the father I never had. and. Um, that sort of guided me along with some mentors in my life of how they uh, treated their children. They may not know it, but they've led the way. I remember many things that the coaches would say, you know, about preparation, about crystallizing your thinking, about having a written plan. Many things that, that I learned from Coach Jim Sweeney that I use in my everyday life today. Well, there's no real secret, in my opinion, to success. You work harder and you work smarter. For me, it was important to get that degree. And uh, so Jim also was really adamant about making sure that you went to class. And uh, I was, uh, I liked school. I liked learning. I liked marketing. I think Fresno State is everything for me. And I belong to Fresno State. I'm a product of Fresno State. And I'm a proud person of Fresno State. So without Fresno State, I couldn't be here. Fresno State provided me with a solid educational um, uh, foundation, and it, it and I did learn like during that summer school program as I was competing with students from other larger universities that I could compete with them. Um, that Fresno State had given me that solid foundation, and I was I was academically prepared for the challenges of medical school and graduate school. When that was at Fresno State, I came across this. A uh, great quote from uh, from Winston Churchill, and uh, it said, uh, uh, "You make a living by what you get. You make a life by what you give." Amen. All right, our next recipient. I don't want to alarm you. Uh, our next recipient has been keeping an eye on all of us in this room tonight. Do you really know the people at your table? He's been making sure we're on our best behavior. Well, he started his career in the FBI, he's currently a special agent with the Department of Homeland Security. So when I say that his work and his accomplishments 
our top secret? That's really not a joke, it's the truth. Much of his work has been focused here in the Central Valley, but the nature of his work spans the nation. He keeps our community safe, but also communities all over the country. His work is highly demanding, and I mean sometimes that's seven days a week, 14 hours per day. He's worked on several large-scale gang investigations resulting in indictments and convictions for racketeering, attempted murder, human trafficking, drug trafficking, firearms offenses, and provided key intelligence to former Attorney General Jeff Sessions on MS-13 activity, some of it right here in the Valley. For his work, he's received a commendation from former FBI Director Robert Mueller and was selected as the HSI Criminal Investigator of the Year last year in 2018. Inspirational words that he lives by are, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating a good man, Tim Cotman, this year's outstanding alumni award recipient for the Division of Research and Graduate Studies, escorted tonight by Dean James Marshall. Thank you so much. I want to thank uh, Russell for nominating me. I want to thank uh, my family. Um, I want to thank Dr. Schweizer, my professor at Fresno State, for uh, all that he's done for me. I want to thank my uh, partner in fright and crime, Andres. And uh, most importantly, I want to thank my wife for every uh, late night call, every missed anniversary, holiday, weekend. Um, her attitude was always, go get them. And uh, that's really, really done everything that I needed. And I also want to thank a university for uh, making my childhood dreams uh, a reality. Thank you so much. Our next recipient is originally from Laos, growing up during the Vietnam War. After the war, he and his family were captured by the new regime and they were placed in a relocation camp. In 1983, he was able to escape the camp through the jungle, finding his way to the border of northern Laos and into a refugee camp. Two years later, two years later, he was able to reconnect with his parents in Thailand. And in 1986, they were accepted into the United States, joining our great Hmong community here in Fresno. Because of his early childhood experiences, he saw education as the key to making a better life for himself and for others. So when he began attending Hoover High School, every day after school, he would ride his bike here to Fresno State to study. After being accepted to Fresno State, he says it made him feel really tall. <laughs> early on, he chose Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as his role model, attracted to Dr. King's advocacy for the oppressed. He obtained his bachelor's degree in social work in 1984, then a master's in social work in 1996. Since then, he has been a champion for the Hmong community, both locally, nationally, and around the globe. He consults with governments, with faith-based organizations, media, academic institutions. He provides training and guidance on cultural competency, burial practices, child abuse prevention, and human rights issues. And he says, Maybe you heard it. Without Fresno State, I would not be who I am today. Without Fresno State, I would not be able to travel through China, Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam. Without Fresno State, I would not be able to build bridges and build community. I think Fresno State is everything for me, he said. I'm a product of Fresno State. I'm a proud person of Fresno State. So without Fresno State, I couldn't be here. He's here tonight because of Fresno State and his resilient spirit. Join me in congratulating Chur Tang B. Yang, this year's Outstanding Alumni Award recipient for the College of Health and Human Services, escorted by the Interim Dean, James Marshall. Thank you, Fresno State. Mm. 
never been into a school until 1987. The age of 18, trying to learn ABC, never thought I would have this moment. I thought if I can just get my high school diploma in this country, it would be the best. Thank you for Fresno State providing me the opportunity. Thank you for the Tudor Center. I live my life through Tudor Center to get through the higher education. Thank you for American education system that provide all the support for people like me to come through and many more need to come through. Thank you for my faculty, my professor that allowed me to study it again and retake the exam again to pass the test. That's why I'm here today. I want to say thank you to Dr. Deshina, Deshana in the social work department during faculty meeting when this application coming through. She said, I think I can nominate B, and I never thought I could have come in here either. Now I'm here. Thank you for all the possible that I feel impossible, but all of you make it possible. I belong to Fresno State. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my two children that are here. I have six children, only two can come tonight. Thank you for my parents joining me tonight. Thank you for the College of Health and Human Services. Thank you for Social Work Department. Thank you for 4E, Title 4E, all the faculties and all the staff. Every day walking Fresno State, really tall, even though I am very short. I know you're casting a long shadow tonight. Congrats again. Our next top dog was born and raised here in Fresno. He attended Fresno State and then continued his education at a little place called Harvard Medical School, graduating with a degree in medicine and a master's degree in public policy. Did you catch that? Medicine and a master's in public policy. He then completed his residency at UCLA, that team the Bulldogs beat in the Rose Bowl last year. While he could have practiced medicine anywhere of his choosing, he chose to come back here to the Central Valley, where he's from, so he could work with underserved and rural patients. While a student at Fresno State, he participated in the Health Careers Opportunity Program, a program he now supports through enlisting his colleague, uh, colleagues as mentors to students. He also serves as a mentor in the Junior Doctors Academy and the Doctors Academy. Those are programs for seventh and eighth grade students who are interested in a future health career. He is an OBGYN at Family Health Care Network, so he's literally ushering the next generation of Bulldogs into the world. And he's an assistant clinical professor at UCSF Fresno, teaching medical students and residents at Community Regional Medical Center in downtown Fresno. Having a personal knowledge of the shortage of health care professionals here in the Central Valley and the wide range of clinical needs in our rural and underserved populations, he says he subscribes to the idea of growing our own, taking our bright students who are interested in medicine, and really giving them the support that they need to be successful, and then have them return to our communities to practice. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Chris Bencomo, this year's Outstanding Alumni Award recipient for the College of Science and Mathematics, escorted by Dean Christopher Meyer. When I entered uh, Fresno State some 34 years ago, I could never have imagined receiving an award such as this. Um, I'd like to thank the College of Science and Mathematics and the HCOP program, but most of all, I'd like to thank my family and friends who are with me through this journey. My success would have never been possible without them. Thank you. Our next recipient is originally from Hanford, and we have some folks from Hanford here. Who knew? And he was the first in his family there in Hanford to graduate high school and the first to graduate college 
After graduating from Fresno State, he continued his education, obtaining his law degree. He practiced law on his own for a couple years. Then he started a law firm with his friend, and you know it now as Con, Soares, and Conway, a top-ranked law firm in California. He's been practicing law now for more than 40 years. His firm specializes in agricultural law, representing farmers throughout the Central Valley. Some of those farmers are here tonight. He represents individuals he says are, quote, absolutely genuine people, and that he often considers not just, he doesn't consider those farmers just clients, but friends. Some of the many organizations he has served include the American Agricultural Law Association, the Agribusiness Committee of the California Bar Association, and the Board of Trustees for the San Joaquin College of Law. He's the past president of the Kings County Bar Association, served as the vice chair of the Agricultural Law Committee of the American Bar Association, and he served on the board of directors of the Kings Art Center Foundation, was board chairman for Sacred Heart Hospital in Hanford, and even as the director of the Kings County YMCA. Being the first in his family to graduate from college, he's passionate about the role of education in improving the lives of individuals and the communities that they live in. He serves on the College of Sequoia's Community Advisory Committee, supports Fresno State's South Valley Initiative, and he's a member of the Fresno State University Advisory Board. He's also a past member of the Institute for Family Business at the Craig School of Business. Pretty heady resume. Please join me in congratulating Jan Kahn, this year's Outstanding Alumni Award recipient for the College of Social Sciences, escorted by Dean Michelle Denbesti. I'm a crybaby too. <laughs> but I've listened to the stories of all of these recipients tonight, and they're truly impressive. And I look out at the audience, and I have seen people here tonight that um, I know have done more for their communities and have achieved more in their professions. And I wonder, what am I doing up here? And, but here I am. And I truly appreciate it. And I want to thank uh, the university, of course, Joe Castro, uh, Dean Mendeste, uh, my family. There have been <laughs> folks along the way who have uh, shined a light of where to go. I want to call out one particular person who's no longer here. Some of you know him as uh, Leonard Myers. Um, that was my sh shining light and my guide. And without him, I'd probably be on the other side of the law. So thank you very much. And I, most importantly, though, I want to thank my family and my wife, um, Jenny. Uh, this is her award, too. Thank you. From a very young age, our next recipient was moved by his parents' generosity, saying, they were always helping people. One time, someone came to our house and their kids needed glasses and they couldn't afford them, so my parents provided those for them. My whole childhood, he said, I saw that kind of behavior from my parents and I've run with that throughout my life. What he loves about the work he does now at his company, Administrative Solutions Incorporated, is that he not only helps employers find better solutions for their companies, but ultimately it helps their employees as well. It is that same love for helping people that has influenced his active support for Fresno State. He previously served as the president of the Bulldog Foundation. He's a heartfelt supporter of the student cupboard. And with his business partner, established an endowment to support the Renaissance Scholars Program at Fresno State. That, if you don't know, it supports students who come from the foster care system. His kind support and advocacy often leads to enlisting others to give to those programs he cares about at Fresno State. 
So let us welcome now our Outstanding Alumni Award recipient for the Division of Student Affairs and Enrollment Management, Barry Moss, escorted by Vice President Frank Lamas. Thank you. Uh, so I'm just a, a kid from a podunk town in South Dakota that our whole population in my hometown is probably not as many people as are in this room this evening, so it's a bit overwhelming for me. Um, first of all, I want to thank my wife, Peg, my son, Mike, my dad, Case, is with us tonight. Um, my ASI crew is back there. Uh, my partners that have been in my business since the beginning. All six of them are here this evening. Uh, and you know, my start really was moving to Fresno, my junior year of college, getting a job at a law firm. Those guys really instilled that there is opportunity. There is the possibility to do something great in life and without them, I wouldn't be here. Dr. Castro, thank you for your boldness. You're, you're causing our university to prosper, not only our university, but our, our community, and I, that's noticed. Thank you very much. Jose, great new sculpture at the Fresno Fair. I believe in helping the kids any way possible because they're the ones that are gonna be the, the leaders of tomorrow. It makes me feel good, you know, in, in, in giving uh, rather than receiving, you know. I, I, <laughs> I'd rather do that, yes. And, it, and it's nice to see, you know, when you help people, a smile on their face and, and, and a thank you, a sincere uh, thank you. So that's, I think that we, we should practice that. It's very unlikely that any person on their own could get to where they're at. When I've, I thank someone like, man, thank you for taking care of me, or thank you for making that call, or thank you for getting this set up for me, they'll tell me like, well, people did that for me, so I'm doing it for you. That's why I, I volunteered um, on the board when I did, and that's why I go to schools, because I think, it's, um, I think it's important to kind of pay that back into the system. From a young age, participating in ways that helped other people is just something that I found enjoyment from, and I saw positive results from and I still do. If I have patience with people, at the same time I have confidence that they're going to get to the place where they need to be. We learn every time we do something wrong. The opportunity to be given a second or a third chance is very important, and I think it's vital that you provide an opportunity for anybody to get up and stand up and to try and do it again. The Valley has a tremendous opportunity to bring people who were raised in the Valley uh, in smaller communities, in difficult circumstances, to go to college, to uh, get their degree, and in whatever degree it is, is to bring them back to their communities. This is the place that all started. All my dreams began. This is the place that they give me so many opportunities to dream big. And, um, and I'm a great example. The American dream is alive and well. Uh, if I can do it, everybody that I, every day I walk into the campus, I feel big, I feel tall. That's why I never stop working in the community. If uh, you work hard, then the result always there. And that's only happened in America. And I'm really proud of my education, my assessment here, because I think that the American education system here provides great opportunity for anybody who are willing to work, who are willing to study. If I was to sum up Fresno State in one word, I would say community. This is a community university uh, focused on elevating the community and on helping the community develop into the best that it can be. I think that too many people don't realize what they can do and therefore don't try. And that's why earlier I said you can't quit. You gotta find something you enjoy and do that. I think I'm most passionate about helping people, getting involved with organizations. You know, I'm a big believer that it takes a village, and if 
I can't give back to my community for what they've done for me and can't give back to my university for what it's enabled me to accomplish, then, then I took too many hits to the head. <laughs> I really subscribe to the, to, to the, um, the idea of kind of growing our own uh, you know, taking our bright students who are interested in medicine and really giving them the support that they need to be successful and then to return to our communities to practice. I love doing what I do and I attribute a lot of that success and training to the academics, the athletics and the socialization at Fresno State. Coming from Fresno State, you know, no challenge is too big and if you say you can't, you won't. And I learned at Fresno State, not just in the classroom, but on the football field, that you can do things that people think you can't. I dream of a community where it's just everyone has got a chance. They've got opportunities. They've got a, a path that they can follow that will get them to a place in life that is, that's good for them. That's, that's I think, all we can hope for, giving them opportunities and, and the path to follow. Anybody proud to be a Bulldog yet tonight? What a special place we have. And we've come to that point in our evening now where we get to recognize our final two recipients, starting with the Arthur Safstrom Service Award and then, of course, our Distinguished Alumni Award. The Arthur Safstrom Service Award is given to an individual who has given exceptional service to the Fresno State community, to the Alumni Association as well, and to the whole Red Wave. This year's recipient, in my mind, exemplifies the Red Wave. He's been a champion of and for Fresno State for more than a quarter century. And some would say he's been on campus so often that you might think he's a student. <laughs> Over the years, he's served on numerous boards and councils at Fresno State, including the Fresno State Alumni Association the Kremen Community Council, the Kremen Alumni and Friends Chapter, and the Bulldog Foundation, of course. He's actively involved in the College of Arts and Humanities, and he's been a driving force behind the Italian Studies Committee, whose goal is to establish, sustain, and grow the program through philanthropic giving and an endowed chair. He has helped to start and to fund multiple scholarships, including two in honor of his late wife, Louise Petrosino and he has supported, yeah, give her a hand. And you heard him talking about her earlier. He's also supported a wide range of philanthropic initiatives in ag, in education, in theater arts, marching band, the President's Circle, and believe it or not, even more than that. And if that's not impressive enough, What's additionally remarkable about this Fresno State alumnus is that as full as his schedule is, he also makes time to take Fresno State students out to lunch and to chat with them to make sure they're doing well, to provide them with encouragement and other things. And his passion for and service to our community, to our students, and for the vital role that education plays in changing lives, it truly is unrivaled. And it's for that reason and you heard him talking about people putting a smile on his face and his chance to put that smile on your face. I don't know if I've ever seen a better bulldog smile than our recipient of the Arthur Safstrom Service Award. So please rise and join me in congratulating Antonio Petrosino, escorted by Kurt Madden. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you, Dr. Um, I, I'm lost. <laughs> it's too much. You know, I, uh, I never thought that I would be here tonight uh, when, I, when I first came in 1947 uh, from Italy. But I'm here, and I am very appreciative. So it has been a very spectacular night, 
And I want to thank everyone who's had part in nominating me for this celebration. And I also want to congratulate the rest of the uh, recipients. And receiving this award is truly an honor, and I'm deeply humbled. I, I, I really am. Uh, over the years, I have been extremely fortunate to have had great mentors, advisors, great students. I, I, I couldn't tell you, they, they, they just were wonderful. Uh, maybe I, I was lucky. Uh, supportive friends and family, and especially my parents and my grandparents. Uh, most importantly, I was blessed with a, a very uh, gracious wife uh, who had a heart of gold. And uh, for this reason, tonight, I'd like to dedicate this award to her memory, to my wife, Louise Sorrenti Petrosino. I wish you were here. And lastly, a heartfelt thank you to my three children, Rocco, Vinci, who's very active here, and Christy. Uh, they're wonderful spouses, my great, wonderful grandchildren, 10 of them, <laughs> and my great grandchildren, which are a joy for, you know, my age, uh, nine of them, so that's very good. And together, all of them, my whole family supporting me, they have been an, an inspiration to continue this philanthropic uh, job that I've been in, entitled to do here. And so I want to give back to the community. Fresno State has been great to me. The community has been great to me. Thank you very much. Grazie. Grazie mille. Thank you and good night. This is it. We've come to that point in the evening where there is only one recipient left to recognize. One individual, through his accomplishments, who is the recipient of the Distinguished Alumni Award for 2019. To be considered for this award, individuals must have distinguished themselves in their industry at a national or international level, and also distinguished themselves in service to their alma mater. Tonight's recipient is recognized as being among the top trial lawyers in the country, having won some of the most significant jury verdicts in United States history. He consistently serves in a leading role in some of the largest personal injury cases in California and around the nation. Because of his expertise, he's been appointed to serve on the plaintiff steering and executive committees in numerous high profile cases. Maybe you've seen him on TV. As a nationally renowned trial lawyer, among many awards, some of his more recent honors include being recognized by the National Law Journal as one of the most influential lawyers in America. He was voted as the California Attorney of the Year this year, 2019, was also ranked as a top 100 lawyer and top 100 plaintiff's attorney last year by the Daily Journal. He's the vice president of the prestigious Inner Circle of Advocates that is 100 of the nation's top plaintiff's lawyers. He is a fellow in the American College of Trial Lawyers, also the International Society of Barristers, and the American Board of Trial Advocates. He received his law degree from Southwestern Law School, but he says what really gives him a sense of pride is hearing his undergraduate university announced. He received his Bachelor of Science degree in political science from California State University, Fresno, or as we say, Fresno State. It was at Fresno State as an athlete and as a student that he says he learned pride and loyalty. Much of that pride comes from being regarded, as you heard, as an underdog. 
He says that's something that's always resonated with him. I always liked the underdog and sticking up for the underdog, he says. I learned at Fresno State, not just in the classroom, but on the football field, that you can do things that people think you can't, and it's up to you. Is that a bulldog mentality or what? And if you apply what you've learned and you're passionate about it, you can outwork everyone else and you'll be successful. Uh, those of you who know him, you know that he carries that pride with him today. It's what has kept him connected with Fresno State as a generous, very generous supporter, as a booster of the life-changing experiences for student athletes and students throughout his alma mater. So this is our chance, ladies and gentlemen, to rise and congratulate that guy wearing number 31 with the slick haircut in that video and our distinguished alumni award recipient, Brian Panish. Good evening. I'm truly honored and humbled to receive this award from Fresno State University. And I'm so blessed to have had the opportunity to have attended Fresno State University. Now, I didn't get the teleprompter like Paul did here, <laughs> so I have to bring my notes up here so I don't forget anything. But before I begin, I, I want to thank a few people. First, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Maddie, the Alumni Association, Kurt Madden, Jacqueline, Peter, and their staff and their volunteers for this incredible night, this incredible place, and this incredible event. Thank you very much for your hard work. I'd like to thank President Castro and Mary for your leadership. Happy anniversary for all the staff, the administration, the teachers at Fresno State, for everything you do to make it a better world for the students when they graduate and carry on. Most importantly here, I'd like to thank my beautiful wife, Rosie, who we've married 29 years, and she made it up here, and the most important decision I made in life was to marry her, and the second most important was to come to Fresno State. I got one of my children to come. 10 years ago, they all came, but Diana, stand up, Diana. Diana's in her second year of law school. She's killing it. Thank you, Diana. And I'd like to thank some of my oldest friends from Fresno that are here tonight sitting with me and sitting next to us. First, uh, Greg and Wendy Ashford. Greg is, uh, actually, I came here with two other players from my high school, St. John Bosco, rated number two right now nationally. And we play number one, so we should be able to get that back. Greg and Wendy Ashford. Greg first met one of my teammates. They were on a recruiting trip at Oregon State. And they, we met up here in Fresno. And when we came to Fresno, we didn't know anyone. And Greg was from Sanger, and he would take us to dinner at his family's house, and Marianne, his mom, and Kenslow, and his brother, his nephew, the center fielder for the Fresno State baseball team. And she would make tuna casserole. And we'd watch TV, and she gave us that sense of being friendly and the community and gave us a home that we didn't have. And thank you so much, Greg, and for your family and Wendy for being here tonight. Thank you. You heard during some of the other speakers, people at my table were being loud. That wasn't me. The first one was my longtime friend, Dan Sweeney and his wife, Linda. She wasn't doing anything. She was always, Linda was fine. Dan was talking a little loud. But I met Dan over 40 years ago when we were in the Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity, and we would dominate the Sigma Chi's and the AGR's. And we've been great friends ever since. I can't probably tell you many of the stories about what we did together, but we've maintained that friendship through the years. And next to me, who was also making some noise with his younger brother, Kevin. Kevin Sweeney, a past top dog honoree, a great person, done great things here for Fresno State. And Kevin, thanks for all you do. Thanks for your friendship. Thanks for being here tonight. 
I made so many great friends in Fresno, I got talked into going into a business with three of them. And the, the business is called Bulldog Almonds. And those three people were Lloyd Fagundis, Ralph Fagundis, and Freddie Fagundis. And if any of you know them, you know that's a risky venture. <laughs> but I love you guys and thanks for being here tonight. Also, who, who attended school with me and is a great friend, in fact, his daughter is gonna be working in our law firm, uh, Warren Papushin, who's a great lawyer in Fresno and a great friend, and thank you, Warren, and for all your support. Chris, and many people talked about a village, and, there, it, and that's what it really is. It's no one can do this unto themselves. No man is an island unto himself. You're all an integrated microcosm of society, and everybody helps meld you. And in my life, I've had so many great friends, and some are here tonight with me, two past Top Dog winners, Omel Nieves and Mark Schuster. Also, Eric Larson from St. John Bosco High School. Taylor Tedford, Dick Manugi, and another SAE, and another SAE, Jeff Scotchko. Thank all of you for being here tonight, and my good friend Don Lewis and her husband, and I've got to know Don through some Fresno State work, and we've had a lot of fun together. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I want to congratulate all of the top dog honorees. The stories and the videos were incredible. I'd like to give a special shout out to Jim Vagum and Chris Pacheco, two more members of the SA fraternity. That was a big part of my life here at Fresno State, being living in the fraternity house and being on the football team. It wasn't really viewed very well by Coach Sweeney. And Dan and I and Kevin had, had late nights arguing about that over the years. But I had a great time. And a special shout out to Chris. Chris at 940 ESPN, along with Paul, has done such a great job of bringing the Bulldog Athletics to the Central Valley and all the things that you've done, Chris. Thank you so much, and thank you most importantly for making that call to me a couple years ago and asking me if I would like to be on the Bulldog Hour radio show every week with Tony D. And he says, hey, come on, you got the face for radio. <laughs> and thank you, Chris, for letting me have that opportunity, and thanks for everything you do. Finally, Antonio. 10 years ago, what is this, 2009, I was lucky to receive a top dog award from the athletic department. So I was feeling pretty good about myself, and the next day was the game, and I had a red lot pass, and I drove over to the game. I was gonna go to my friend Ed Dunkel's tailgate over on Cedar. And so I pull in this early park, everything looks great. All of a sudden, some guy V-lines over to my car, Antonio Petrosino. <laughs> he says, what are, you, what are you doing there? This is my spot. I said, I got a pass. He goes, my spot, my spot. I said, hey, Tony, I played on the football team with Rocco. Move. I said, I know Vincey. Move. I said, I'm gonna Vincent, your grandson. Move the car. So, Tony, tomorrow I have a different pass. Don't worry, I won't be trespassing in your tailgate. I have been so blessed in my life, and so many great things have happened to me with my family and my friends, but I attribute so much of it to the education I received here at Fresno State, not just in the classroom, but outside the classroom, socializing, football, athletics, the Bulldog Foundation. And when I came here, people like Harry Gakian, who was the president of the Bulldog Foundation, nurtured us, took us under his wing, talked to us, and really had a big influence on my life. I wasn't intending to come to Fresno State. In fact, I was considering to go to some other schools, we'll mention them, and there was this one coach that kept coming by my school. And he kept saying, oh, come on, just, just take a visit, just take a visit. And I really didn't want to go. One of the other kids was going to come here. And the planes kept getting canceled because of the fog. I don't see that as much anymore, but when back in the 70s, the Fresno airport would be shut down every day. And if you lived in LA, 
and you couldn't drive with a grapevine, you couldn't go home unless you want to go through Santa Barbara. And so the coach came to my house. It was Dennis Erickson. And he gets in the car and he goes, we'll just drive there. And we're driving up through Bakersfield and it is so far, I've never seen fog like this in my life. And he's driving 75 miles an hour <laughs> right behind the car in front of us, no worry in the world and just zipping down the highway. And then he takes me to meet Jim Sweeney. And we, we, we're gonna go out to lunch, and I'll never forget this. We go to, it was at that time called Pardini's down on Shaw, and we drive over there, and we park the car, and I go to push down the lock and close the door. And he goes, hey, kid. This is Fresno, you don't have to do that. We're not in LA, they're not gonna rob you up here. <laughs> he was working me the whole time. Working me and working me, and I came here and I learned some of the most incredible lessons from the dog father, Jim Sweeney. I learned lessons in life about preparation, about being the underdog, about taking on the biggest and the best, about hard work, about accountability, about discipline, and about having fun, and about competing, and competing to get better every day, and about loyalty, and about helping others, and about making a difference. And I draw on those experiences so often in my life and in my practice, and people I represent, and there are many ups and downs. It's not all headlines, and it's hard at times. And I draw on those experiences to get through the rough times and to get through to the other side. And I just wanted to share with you, and I know Chris would love to be, do this, they come to 20 seconds. Chris, I said, I'm not putting up with 20 seconds. And there's no music coming on here. By the way, I did forgot to thank my good friend, Aunt Terry Toomey, athletic director, and his beautiful wife, Candy. Thanks for all you do here, Terry. Great to have you. The first one was the six Ps. Proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> How about this one? If you do what you always do, you'll be what you always were. The five success essentials. Number one, crystallize your thinking, have a written plan, develop a burning desire, have supreme confidence and iron will determination. I'm always writing down what I plan to do the next day or through for the next week and keeping, they make fun of me and my firm, you're already the list guy. You gotta have a written plan, I learned that early on. And I love this one. It's okay to disagree, but don't be disagreeable. But my all time favorite saying that I use every day and in trials, when you're in trial, I mean, it's a very stressful thing for everyone and it's her ups and downs, it's a roller coaster. And you've gotta get through the, uh, the bad times to get to the good times and it balances out, but it's very stressful because somebody's life is in your hands and their future and you're their advocate. And he always would say, all setbacks are temporary and they're to be viewed as such. And that is one of the great things I've learned here at Fresno State that I take with me every day. I want to share with you one last thing as I was thinking, what could I share with you tonight? I've been reading lately, you know, about some research and studies in education. And I've been reading about a professor named Dr. Angela Duckworth. And she's a professor at the University of Pennsylvania. But she used to be in the consulting business and she would go to companies and try to turn them around and correct problems that existed. And it was high pressure and she wanted to be involved in education. So she went in New York City and taught seventh grade math. But she came from a data analytic background, which we're seeing more and more today, and she studied the students. And what she wanted to find out was what was it? What was that key essential ingredient? What was that key factor, that key characteristic that key personality trait that determined whether someone was successful. 
and she studied it, and she saw that some of her math students that had superior test scores weren't doing as well. And, but she saw some of the ones that didn't have as good a scores do better. She then moved to Chicago, taught 11th grade, continued this data analysis, developed questionnaires and studies, and determining which kids in Chicago would go to 12th grade and not drop out. What were the key factors? What was it that made that determination? She went back to get her PhD. She went to Annapolis. She studied the cadets. Who was going to be the best leader, the best officer, and what was it about their background that could determine who the leaders were going to be and who you want to put in that position? She studied sales reps, large corporations, and she came to the conclusion and her research found there was just one trait, one trait that could make a significant difference in someone's success. And it wasn't social intelligence, and it wasn't good looks, and it wasn't physical health, and it wasn't a high IQ. What the research showed was that it was grit, G-R-I-T. And that grit is passion and perseverance. And it's stamina. And it's stick to itness. And it's not doing it for an hour, or for a day, or for a month, or for a year. It's doing it every day for the rest of your life. It's a growth mindset. And as Coach Sweeney would preach, that there's nothing about setbacks that's permanent. They're all temporary and to be viewed as such. And that's what I found here at Fresno State and what the people at Fresno State are about, what the teachers, the coaches, and the students, and the people in this community, in the San Joaquin Valley. They're all about grit. And that's what makes the difference in whether they're successful. And they might not be the smartest or the most handsome, but they're gonna continue to work hard and they're gonna to continue to persevere and have passion. And nowhere have I seen the passion of the Red Wave and the Fresno State fans, not only here in this community, but throughout the state. So I am proud and I'm grateful for everything that I learned at Fresno State. And I love, doctor, to go up against those Harvard lawyers and the people and I say, well, I went to Fresno State. You know where that is? So thank you all. God bless all of you, Bulldog born, Bulldog bred. God bless you all. Good night. Go dogs. I think the ladies and gentlemen of the jury have rendered their verdict that that was a pretty solid closing argument. Thank you, Brian. You know, tonight we've heard some exceptional stories of service, of resilience, of sacrifice. And while those stories are really wide ranging, think about it, the diversity of the stories that we heard tonight, they all have, and I think you know what it is, they all have at least one thing in common. Grit, yeah, and maybe those two words, Fresno State, all of those stories exist because of Fresno State, their alma mater. So to lead us in Fresno State's alma mater, as you see behind me, once again, the Fresno State Chamber Singers.
Are we all going to remember tonight? You think next year we should fill up the other seats with the fraternities and sororities? So the competition isn't limited to these tables? Thank you so much for being here tonight. I think we can all agree it's been a special evening. Maybe for you, as it does for so many, it validates the role that we all play in Fresno State's rise. So on behalf of the Fresno State Alumni Association, thank you for being part of the 2019 Top Dog Alumni Awards. We want to encourage you to not forget what you heard tonight, to carry these stories with you so they can become inspiration for you as you dream big, as you live boldly, and maybe even ask yourself, what's my bulldog story? Who knows, you may just be our next top dog next year. So have a wonderful evening, be safe, and don't forget to wear red tomorrow night at the stadium, seven o'clock, when the Bulldogs take on the Hornets of Sac State. Drive home safely, God bless you, and go dogs.